Hello everyone. What I'm going to do is what I would call sort of a classic optimization problem. What we have here is we have a box and the base of the box is the shape of a square. So the dimensions are x by x. That, that's the variable I'm using, x by x. And it has an open top. So there's no top or lid to this. Now the height of this box could be the same as the length of the base, as the side, length of the side, but it might not be. So I'm gonna give it a different variable, y. So I have x by x, that's the side of the, of the square base, and then I have a height, y. Now, we're going to find the dimensions of the box that minimize the amount of material used. Now, to show that amount of material used, what I've done is I've cut those open. If you don't know how to draw scissors, I will tell you that this could work for you. What you can do is you can draw a nine and then a backwards nine. Sort of looks like scissors. Anyway, okay, so you cut open this box and this is the picture over here on the right, what it'll look like. But I don't think you really need to have that picture. Now, what we have is, first I'm gonna start off with a formula for area. And area is what we're trying to find uh, the minimum value of when we're trying to find X and Y that give area minimum. Now to find the area, what I'll do is I'll start off with the base, which is a square. So I have X times X, which is X squared. And then I have each of these sides and those sides have area base times height. And so that'll be X, Y for each of those sides. And again, I don't really think you necessarily have to have that picture that I'm drawing on the right-hand side. So you have x times y is the area of one of those sides, but there's four sides there. Okay, so that, we're trying to find x and y that make area the minimum. The reason the, the, the problem says the amount of material used is they don't really want to say area because you could think, well, there's an inside area and an outside area. So I don't mean that, I just mean Look at this picture on the right in the area of that, of that region there. That, that'll be the amount of material used. And now what we also have is we have a constraint. And the constraint is the volume of the box. Now the volume is V equals, well, it's, it's, it's length times width times height. So this will be... This will be length times width times height. Oh no. Length times width times height. Okay, so in this case, it's gonna be x times x times y. Those are our dimensions. And our volume is 32,000. So we have 32,000 is the volume that we're saying we want to make the box have as volume. So that's our fixed amount of volume. And we're going to figure out what we can do with X and Y to get 32,000. So for example, we, you know, I drew the box like, uh, as you can see in that picture, but maybe it's better to have a, um, a, a, a tall, thin box. So, you know, that's what we're going to find out. We're going to work on, on, on that to find out what dimensions give the, give the best box. But, you know, maybe, maybe it should be something like I'm trying to draw here, sort of a little bit clumsy, but, but maybe, that's, maybe that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so, so the, there's, there's different ways I can draw this box. But we want to find the box that gives the you and and it still has area of 32,000, but we want to draw the shape, get the shape, the dimensions that give the maximum, uh, or actually, no, sorry, they give the minimum amount of material used. So maybe a, a tall, thin one, or maybe it sh should be, you know, a, a sort of a wide box. And we just can you know, keep going on and all the different possibilities there. So that's what we're going to find out is, is which ones 
going to do the job for us. And what the heck happened there? Oh, well, that was sort of interesting. So, um, huh. About to give up on this for a moment. Okay. I shall just try not to be so perfect. Okay, so anyway, what's our box? What's it going to look like? Okay. So um, now, what we do is we eliminate one of the variables. See, we're trying to find x and y to make a a minimum. First of all, why don't I just make x and y zero, right? Or cl very close to zero to make a minimum. Well, there's a constraint that x squared times y is 32,000. I'm going to eliminate the var a variable. I'm going to start with this constraint, x squared times y equals 32,000. And I am going to get rid of one of the variables by first solving for the one of the variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for y. You can solve for x. I think it would be very inconvenient, maybe even lead to problems if we solve for x, because we'll have to take a square root. We have x squared equals this you know, these 32,000 divided by y. You'd have to take the square root. I don't want to do that because I'm going to take the derivative later on. And uh, Okay, so that's why I don't want to do that. One of the reasons, at least. So now I have... A equals x squared plus 4xy. That's from above. I replace y by 32,000 divided by x squared. I just plop that in there. And so we see that A equals x squared plus 4 times 32 is 128 with three zeros. And then there's cancellation with x and the squared. So that gives 128,000 times 1 over x. All right, that's our area formula. I'm going to make just a little note that x squared is concave up. Why do I know that? Because I know what a parabola looks like. I know parabolas are concave up. One, this is also for x greater than 0. We want dimensions that are positive. 1 over x is concave up when x is greater than 0. So I'm summing two concave up functions. That's going to give a concave up function. I'll state that without a proof, but that, that's true. Okay, um, so see, so what I'm getting here is I'm going to get a concave up function, and the critical number where the derivative is equal to zero will be a minimum. So, all right, so let's go ahead and find the critical numbers. The critical numbers are found by setting... The, finding the derivative and setting it equal to zero and solving. All right, so what's a critical number? A critical number is when the first derivative is equal to zero or the first derivative is undefined. It's, it's values for x such that the first derivative is equal to zero or the first derivative is undefined. Why are we looking for those? Because the derivative is equal to the slope of the tangent line. And where the in in a, in a in the, the we want to find where the tangent line is horizontal. So we want a horizontal tangent line to find the minimum, and a horizontal line has slope zero. So we want to find out where the derivative is equal to zero. I'll just go ahead and, and pretty straightforward use the power rule here. Notice where I, I wrote x to the minus one power, so it's easier to use the power rule. The derivative of x squared is is 2x, and then I leave the constant alone, and the derivative of x to the minus 1 is negative 1 times x to the minus 2, S straight up using the power rule there. So then I solve a prime equals 0. So I'll have 2x, 128,000 times negative 1 is minus 128,000, divided by x squared, and that's equal to 0. Now notice throughout x is a dimension, so x is positive. So, um, so even though a prime of zero is undefined, zero is not in the domain of a, so I won't consider that a critical number. I'll just add 128,000 over x squared on both sides. And then I can cross multiply and get 2x cubed is equal to 128,000. Is that step two too quick? Shorten it. I mean, you could not shorten it, make it a little longer. Multiply both sides by x squared. 
then if I divide by 2, I get x. Okay, x times x squared is x cubed. Divide by 2, 128 divided by 2 is 64. I wrote this as 64 times 1,000 because what I'm going to do now is take the cube root of all this stuff. And I'm just going to point out that, that 64 is equal to 4 times 4 times 4. So the cube root of 64 is 4. 1,000 is equal to 10 times 10 times 10. So the cube root of 1,000 is 10. So we get x equals 40, and I believe it's centimeters. So that's, that's one of our um, dimensions. And then we can find y by just plugging in to our, um, we can find y by plugging in into our constraint. Okay, before I do that though, let's just talk about something I would say is a little bit optional. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the second derivative. And what, I'm gonna, what the second derivative is gonna tell me is it's gonna tell me whether this function actually is concave up, whether it's concave up or concave down when x is equal to 40 centimeters. Okay, so I copied down what a prime is. I'm, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because it's easy for one. So like, if it were really difficult, I'd probably come up with some excuse for not doing it. Okay, the derivative of two x is two, the derivative of x to the minus two is negative two, x to the minus three. So a double prime is two, negative times negative makes positive. 128 times two is 256,000 over x cubed. Now, a double prime at 40 is something that I'm not really keen on, on calculating. But I don't really need to calculate it at all. What I need to do is just notice that it's greater than zero. Right? I mean, I can just see I'm, I have, everything's positive there when I plug in 40. And so what that means is that, therefore, A is concave up. That is the conclusion from that, is that A is concave up. I already gave another argument for why it's concave up. A is concave up because the second derivative is positive. I'm not saying it looks like this parabola, but, you know, anyway, okay. So this is concave up. So therefore, I can just see, therefore, I'll say it's concave up at or near around. X equals 40. Therefore, X equals 40 is a minimum. That is, uh, what I mean is a local min. What th that is, that is um, that's the second derivative test. All right, you take the second derivative, if the second derivative is positive, that means that at, at a number of like 40, that means that x equals 40 gives a minimum. The minimum, someone might say, is, is actually the, the value of the area. So I'll just say, oops, I'll just say it gives a min. Even better, say it gives a local min, but it just gives a min. So I, that's my second argument for why this is concave up. And, and you maybe just go to the, to the idea of the geometry, that whole problem to say that, look, x equals 40 has to be a minimum. So, you know, it's easy to take the second derivative here. If it's difficult, then maybe you say, I don't want to do that. Um, I'll figure out another way to find the second derivative or to, to show that 40 is going to be a minimum. Okay, here I'm, I have my constraint. And I'm just going to find y by plugging in 40 here. But I'm doing it wrong. Okay, I put in x is 40. And so y equals 32,000 divided by 40 squared. I feel like at the very end, I'm just getting a little too messy. 
So y is 32,000. Four, four squared is four times four is 16. 10 times 10 is 100, so I have those zeros. Without a calculator again, I think I'm on to something. I can get this, cancel out the twos, two zeros I mean. And 32 divided by 16 is two, so I have 20 centimeters. And it's not really something I think I would have figured out on my own, maybe. But I, but I just think this is interesting to me is that I, that the dimensions are, well, I have x, okay, I have x equals 40 and y equals 20. And the dimensions I'm going to write as saying the dimensions are 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters. And I, I mean, if you look at my picture, I tried to reflect that because I did the problem before I did the video. But actually, it wasn't so, I don't know, it just wasn't that clear to me that that was, if I were, if I were to build this on my own, I, I don't know if I really saw that at a time. So I can do like an overview. Maybe I've been talking already long enough, but the overview is that we have a box that has a square base. So we have x by x is the dimension of the base and the height I'm gonna call y. There's no lid to the box. And then what we're trying to do is find the, we're gonna say that the volume is 32,000. Given that constraint, the volume is 32,000, find x and y that gives the least amount of material. And I come up with a formula for the area of, you know, which corresponds to the amount of material. And that's going to be x squared, because that's the area of the base, plus 4 times the area of each side, which is x, y. And then the volume is x times x times y. Just multiply all the dimensions. And that's 32,000. That's our constraint. We use the constraint. It's pretty much how it always works. Uh, pretty much. I don't know. Might be some exception. But you take the constraint and you use that to, to eliminate one of the variables. y equals 32,000 divided by x squared, and then in your area formula, you replace y by that expression, which I'm doing here. Cancel, right? One over x is x to the minus one. Then, when you, when you do that, you, can, you have a's, this nice little formula of x, and it turns out it's sort of easy to find the derivative. Do that, power rule. Then moreover, you set the derivative equal zero to find out where the slope of the tangent line is zero because that's going to give a horizontal tangent line, which will give a minimum in this case. Well, that's not that difficult to do. I mean, you get a nice integer for your cube root and you get x is 40. Now, once you're doing that, you can go the extra mile and take a second derivative and in fact show that the second derivative is positive, meaning the graph's concave up, which means that x equals 40 gives a minimum. Then easily find y by plugging x equals 40. That gives 20. So here we have our dimensions. Epic. Turns out that the height is half of the side of the square base. Okay, that's all. Thank you.